mentioned that they had bought the rings and that they had a certain biblical phrase inscribed in the inside of both rings. This is the phrase. Because he first loved us. John 4.19 says, we love because he first loved us. Man, nervous. Yeah. <laughs> you got another one in a few months. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I haven't even seen her and I'm crying already inside. <laughs> Highly, highly suspenseful time. My nerves aren't going to be able to handle this. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> <Whew. laughs> wow. God has done a great thing. <laughs> you look beautiful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, sweetie. Big day. Yes, so good. Love you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yep. The beginning of forever. Wow. <laughs> that is so beautiful. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Am I going to get through this? I don't know. You want to come and join us, Mama? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we get pictures? Also, mommy, I wrote this for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
I can, okay. So right here? Yeah. Alright, and just, just cry? Lord, I, I just, I thank you for the, the wonderful gift of marriage that you have allowed me and Marcy to, to join in. I just thank you for how much you've, you've blessed me, Lord, providing a wife that I can lead and love and, and cherish. Um, just, Lord, you are so kind. Now, as we consider the passage of 1 John 4, 19, what we find here is not necessarily how to love, but rather why we love. Of course, it's critical to understand and be responsible in how to love one another. And it is important that you, Ryan and Marcy, know what your love for each other should look like. But I would submit to you and the rest of the congregation, that it is equally, if not more important, to know why you should love each other. In fact, the why will make the how even more effective, even more powerful. The why is quite simple and, and yet foundational. The verse says, we love because he first loved us. There it is. Why do we love? Simply put, because he first loved us. Marcy, words truly cannot express how blessed I am that the Lord has brought you into my life. God in his perfect sovereignty and wisdom has brought us to this moment, and I thank him. Just as Christ first loved his, loved his bride, the church, and gave himself up for her, so do I vow to love, lead, and daily sacrifice myself for you. I vow to let no thing, no relationship, and no desire come before a marriage aside from my relationship with Christ himself. I vow to love you with a biblical love, one, one that is defined in 1 Corinthians 13 as a love that is patient and kind, that is not arrogant, brash, or rude, that does not seek its own, is not provoked, nor takes into account wrong suffering. And when I fail and fall short of God's standard for me as a husband, I vow to humbly um, submit myself and be the chief repenter in our home. Marcy, I love you so much, and I can't wait to call you my wife. To my most precious gift and friend, Brian Peter, as I consider the past few months, I am so filled with joy to know and see Christ's work in our lives. I am thrilled that today I get to call you my husband. Thank you for loving me so freely with a love that clings to Christ as its source and strength. I know that only comes from a heart transformed by love, which God first showed us by sending Jesus to take the punishment we deserve for our sin. And so, in the Lord's kindness, I have the overwhelming privilege today to commit my life and love to you and only you. I vow to be faithful to our covenant before God, never giving you reason to doubt that I am yours and you are mine. I know that in my own strength, I will not be able to keep all of these vows, but God is so faithful and as he promises in Philippians 1.6, he who began a good work will complete it. Any good work in me comes from Christ so that he may get all of the praise. Our day is finally here, my love. I cannot wait to spend the rest of my life with you. I love you so much. <laughs> you may now have the great joy of kissing your wife. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
are. <laughs> so good. It's so, so good. And your dad's sermon. I know. I told my dad, I was like, when you. When you like do your message, I was like, I really want you to just preach, just mm -hmm. preach, yeah, and preach to like so the congregation. Well. No, the gospel was so good. And I'm like, he was like, I loved how he was like looking around. Yeah, he, and he was like, like, he kept on looking. He was like, I'm not talking to you guys. And I was I'm like, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> like he was just like. Things caring for other people, and I know that she's going to do that so well for you. I mean, she already is, so it's great. You and I both have been greatly affected by various hardships in our lives. Whenever bad got cancer, you could have been depressed, you could have been walked up and you're unconscious, not opening up to others. Well, I'm glad to say, by the Lord's sovereignty, you did it. Both you and I are strengthened by that trial, and I know that seeing you here today, Dad certainly been proud of the man that you turned into. Never forget, Marcy, that Ryan is one of God's greatest gifts to you. And likewise, Marcy to you, Ryan. May he and his word always be the foundation of your life together. I'll be here when all gets lost. We can count on hope when there's rivers to cross. Oh, and I know our lives will always change. But our hearts forever stay the same.
like a sun.